Hello, and welcome back to Prodigal Overland. My name is Brad. If you're new here, welcome. In this video, we're going to be talking to you all about what it's like to tow with a Jeep Gladiator. Specifically, what's it like to tow on the upper end of its towing limit? We recently com completed a trip from Asheville, North Carolina to Uray, Colorado, which is 1,700 miles through the Blue Ridge Mountains, through the Rocky Mountains, across Kansas, which is way hillier than I realized, um, 1,700 miles there. Then we wheeled and did trails, and then we towed it the 1,700 miles back. So in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about things like uh, fuel economy, um, what gears was I running most of the time, what was my range like, um, engine temps, coolant temps, oil temps, um, handling on the road, everything you wanted to know about towing with a Jeep Gladiator um, with a 30-foot trailer and a loaded down weight probably around 65, 6,700 pounds. So you're going to want to stick around for this video if you've got any interest in towing with your Jeep Gladiator and, and really knowing and understanding what in the world this thing can handle and maybe where it falls short. So stick around and see what's coming next. So here is our 2021 Jeep Gladiator Rubicon. It's got the Mopar two inch lift and 35 inch Mickey Thompson Baja Legend EXP. This is a new tire. So we'll have a review coming on this a little bit later as well as kind of a walk around of our Gladiator. But we are in the process of actually taking a trip out west. Yesterday we drove from Asheville, North Carolina out to close to Knoxville, uh, Tennessee, but we are headed to Uray, Colorado, um, where we'll be doing off-roading events out there, and we are towing our Jayco travel trailer, our 30-foot Jayco travel trailer. This is a Jayco Flight SLX. This is the 267 BHS. It's a 30-foot travel trailer. The Jeep Gladiator is rated to tow up to 7,000 pounds. Our 30-foot Jayco has a dry weight of 5,800 pounds. We're going to take a look here. Uh, let me show you. So, let me try to find it here. So, yeah, if right here. So, 5,925. Let's see if you can see that. 5,925 is what this is dry weight with propane. Um, and it's saying that we can fit about 1,075 pounds pounds of cargo which would put this right at 7,000 pounds fully loaded a trailer that's for sure pushing the limits of what a gladiator can tow you can already feel people getting fired up about how much this is towing this is our tow setup this is the blue ox weight distribution hitch so if you don't know what weight distribution does is it shifts the weight forward on your truck so that it's not all right here on the back end. I can tell you without this setup, when I just drop the trailer down, it for sure sags the Jeep quite a bit. So with it, um, it's fairly level. I have the jack down just because we didn't have to unhitch last night, but I will show you what that looks like without, um, with, with basically the total load set up on the Jeep. In addition to a great weight distribution setup, Hitch. We also have a fantastic brake controller. This is the Takancha P3. We had this installed in the Grand Cherokee when we used to tow with that. I switched it over to the truck, and this thing's amazing. So um, if you're looking for brake controllers, I would highly recommend the Takancha. So here's a little inside look. Here's Lily along for the trip. So this actually, this trailer has more room than our fifth wheel did as far as the living area even though our fifth wheel was about 10 feet longer. Um, sofa turns into a jackknife bed. And then obviously the table turns into a bed as well, which is kind of down in that, this is travel mode. Um, and then when we get into camp, we set this up as a table. So we've got a full table. We've got the sofa, the kids' beds. There's the bunkhouse, so the kids' beds. There's a, a double bed up here, double bed down here, sink. 
bathroom, which is tiny but functional. Shower. And then up front, obviously, well, cabinets, fridge, stove. Coming through here, we've got our bedroom. This is the master, which when I'm laying down here, my feet are definitely touching the wall. So the, the sleeping arrangements in this rig are much smaller than our previous rig, but we actually have more kind of living space when we have people gather inside for our events. So guys, I wanted to show you kind of some vehicle temperatures. There's our current transmission temp. We're at 199. Oil temp, 242. That was PSI, the oil pressure. Let's see what else we got here. And then there's the coolant temp, 217. Um, and we've been on the road now, oh boy, probably four hours or so. So those are pretty accurate as far as what I'm seeing. Um, temperatures. All right, so we are on our third day of driving. I thought Kansas was flat, um, and we're picking up about a thousand feet of elevation today. I didn't completely empty our water tank from last night, and I should have because the truck struck on a little bit more it's also 98 degrees so it's almost 100 degrees out um, but we've had a couple of down shifts when we're climbing these hills and Kansas is hilly like there's these long hills and I'm dropping down into fourth gear sometimes third gear to get up them and when I do that the engine gets warm quick um, and actually it doesn't matter if I'm in manual sh manually shifting or in drive it almost, even in manual, it'll down, I guess, upshift. It'll upshift when it gets too warm to try to shed off some heat. Um, so we've been taking breaks. I mean, in my range, on a full tank of gas, I'm getting about 120, 130 miles um, before I have to pull over. So, not awesome. Good morning, everyone. It is about 6 a.m. on day four, I think. It's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to my father. Um, but we've got a long day ahead of us. So we've got about 550 miles to do today. We're gonna take 70 to Route 50 through Monarch Pass, um, which I think has an elevation around 11, 11 or 12,000 feet. We have ourselves as light as we can be emptied all the tanks. We're trying to get a very early start this morning knowing that it's going to be a very long day. The other thing about this Route 50 is they're doing construction um, along it and it's basically shut down during the week. It's open on the weekends to two-way traffic but there's only like an hour or two it's open like Monday through Friday. Otherwise it's completely shut down so we have to make it through the pass and have to get on the other side of this before Monday morning. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do that without issue. But of all the days of this trip, this is the one that I was most nervous about and still am most nervous about. So hopefully we can get a good start this morning and all goes well. Day for you guys uh, we're getting about five to six miles per gallon um, heading across Kansas there was a pretty stiff crosswind um, had a little bit of slight sway if we were up around 70 now it's mostly at our back so we're okay um, been rocking fourth gear quite a bit which I'm not a big fan of Occasionally we'll be able to shift up to fifth. Engine temps have been okay. My coolant level or coolant trans is well, trans is 199 right now. Coolant temp is 222. Uh, and my oil temp is 248. But 
yeah, we are only, man, we might be 100 miles in. I'm having to stop and fill up every, well, I guess my range is just over 100 miles at this point. So at least what I'm comfortable with, especially with gas stations being so far away. So we are just outside the town of Salina. Um, and now starts the long climb up through Monarch Pass. So this is kind of what I was worried about here. Um, so hopefully the climb goes well. <clears throat> kind of after Colorado Springs, we were weaving through the mountains, but that was actually went pretty well. But now, like I said, we're going to be climbing here for quite a bit. So, we made it to the top. Uh, I gotta say, it wasn't pretty. <laughs> At about 30 miles an hour was how we were making it to the top. Um, definitely if I tried to push it, could maybe push it to 40, but then I'm in third gear and everything's overheating. So, um, we had to go nice and slow, but, but we made it. So, should be, fingers crossed, easier to get down. Um, but yeah, we're at 11,000 feet, so that's, that's saying something. So here we are at the top of Monarch Pass. Continental Divide, baby, 11,000 feet. And the Gladiator pulled a 30-foot rig of it. Pretty stinking cool. So now that we've kind of showed you exactly what the trip was like, looked at some of those engine temps and that sort of thing. Let's talk about, generally speaking, how to go. Um, honestly, I would say it went about like I thought it would go. So let's start with the pros, okay? Uh, number one pro about towing the Jeep Gladiator is, is the utility. I don't know any other vehicle that I can slap 35-inch tires, a 2-inch lift, tow 1700 miles go have a great time wheeling and then tow it back and it to make it okay um so the the utility of the gladiator number one is why we kind of got it knowing that we were going to probably be doing some towing with it having that truck bed um being able to massively outdo which you can do with a wrangler wranglers towing capacity is around 3500 pounds this gladiator is 7000 pounds which we were definitely using most of that um, so just the utility of this vehicle to be able to to tow like that and go have fun and come back is just I don't think you can overstate that so that's number one on the positives another huge benefit to this is just the ride quality with actually with the lift installed we did tow with the stock suspension and then with the Mopar suspension and I do think the Mopar suspension probably the shocks is a little more stiffer and so actually when i'm towing with the gladiator with the mopar lift the ride handling actually improved so plus is there um and then specifically specifically for us we've towed with a grand cherokee uh 25 foot trailer with a grand cherokee uh which has the v8 and a 70 7200 pound towing capacity versus the truck with a v6 Stability on road, on road handling towing was better with the with the truck with the Gladiator. I think primarily because of that longer wheelbase. Now, I absolutely missed my V8. Um, that V8 was able really to push through uphill climbs um, without much issues. Whereas the V6 for sure struggles, which leads me into some of the cons with with using the Gladiator as a tow vehicle. Um, right up front, if you're just looking for a tow vehicle and you're considering the Gladiator and you're not into wheeling or off-roading or anything like that, I would probably push you a different direction for sure. There are many other trucks that tow way better than a Gladiator. Um, cons on this list would be power, number one. That V6 with towing, especially towing heavy, like I said, 6,700 pounds, 30-foot trailer, 
it is underpowered. If you're doing anything more than like some light hills, some some flat towing, um, like I said, struggling through the mountains, um, definitely underpowered in that area for that. Another issue I have with the, with the Gladiator specifically with towing is the range that I can get out of it out of a full tank of gas. I'm averaged on on a, the good end, I would say like relatively flat terrain, I'm getting around 150 miles to the tank, which isn't awesome. Um, that's averaging somewhere between, right around maybe seven miles to the gallon. Um, when I was out west going through the Rockies and all that, or even Kansas, my goodness, Kansas with the rolling hills, we had going there, it was steady like uphill climb, rolling hills and a headwind. I was probably averaging somewhere around five miles to the gallon, five to, yeah, probably five. Um, and my range dropped, I would say around maybe 120 miles to the tank. Um, so you're stopping a lot to fill up every hour or so, which if uh, you need frequent bathroom stops or to get out and stretch is a plus. It probably kept things, tires maybe from overheating. So there were some benefits to that, but you're stopping a lot. Um, so range, fuel economy, again, would not pick this vehicle if that's your primary purpose. Um, another kind of con I found with just being in the, in the truck for, you know, coming back, we did 1,700 miles in three days. So we were on the road usually by eight and getting off the road about eight. Um, with stops and all that. So I found just leg room became an issue. Um, I would use cruise control some, but didn't want to like use it too much because I found that it really throttled down too much. And I knew I was really working the truck and didn't want to like overdo things. Um, so I, I tended to avoid cruise control and just kind of manually shift and manually work through things to try to reduce some of the load or shift points on the engine and so because of that, I found that, you know, specifically I'm a physical therapist. So my patellar knee pain, posterior patella pain on my right foot my that was on the accelerator, it just got achy just from that constant pressure of how I had to sit in the truck. So not a ton of room, not a ton of comfort with long haul kind of trips. So overall, would I recommend this to tow? Um, if you've got towing experience, We've, we had experience towing with the Grand Cherokee. We had a 2011 Dually uh, diesel, turbo diesel, that we towed a 40-foot fifth wheel with. So we've got a fair amount of towing experience, and I felt comfortable with our setup. We've got, I think, a great weight distribution hitch in that Blue Ox. The, I love, love, love our, our Takasha P3 brake controller. It really allows you to dial in how much boost, brake boost it's giving you. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. And with our setup... Like, I think it's a safe tow. It really was. I felt like I have stopping power. I feel like it's not a ton of sway. Um, we had some a lot of wind. We've had trailers, big trailers past us. I can feel it pull and the push with it when a big semi goes by you for sure. Um, if someone tells you that they've got a 30 foot trailer on the back end and they can barely feel it with the, with the truck, this Gladiator, I, I think they're full of crap. You can definitely feel it back there. Um, so I wouldn't recommend our setup if you're brand new to towing. I think it's definitely on the upper end. And I, I think long term, if you were traveling and towing a lot, you're going to put a lot of stress on this vehicle that um, it just feels like, you know, you're kind of punishing your vehicle. Like when we were going through Kansas, through Colorado, I said to Caleb, man, I just know I'm punishing my truck right now. And so I would be leery. Uh, like, can it do it? Yeah, it did it. It got there and it got back. But but I would not want to make a habit of that with this vehicle, especially if it was out west and that was a regular towing thing, just because you know you're, you're going to be stacking up maintenance costs in the future. I really think the sweet spot for towing, if you have a Glad 8 and you're like, how much can I tow safely and all that, I would say 25 feet or under and with a loaded up weight of about 5,000 pounds and so not just the dry weight. When you go to buy a trailer, if you don't know, you're going to see the dry weight. That's what the thing weighs with nothing in it. And you got to figure you're going to put your stuff in it, right? So our dry weight, like you saw with uh, the Jayco, is right around 5,800 pounds. We can put up to 7,000 pounds in it 
we probably had about 900 to 1,000 pounds in the trailer when we were towing it. Um, but sweet spot for towing, I would say 25 feet and under for length, um, around 5,000 pounds loaded up. I think you're well within the comfort levels of the Gladiator, and I think you could do that consistently and not feel like you're destroying your truck. Um, <laughs> so where we're at right now, like I'm comfortable towing this, this trailer, you know, two to three hours from where we live, uh, which we do live in some hills and some mountains. And I feel comfortable with that. I think that'd be fine. I'd feel, you know, on weekends, that sort of thing. I think it's great. I, I really think I'd be hesitant to do another cross country trip with the truck and the trailer, just knowing the abuse that, it, that I'd be giving it. So there you guys go cross country towing with a Jeep Gladiator. I hope this video was helpful. I hope you learned a few things. I learned a few things. Um, if you're brand new to this channel, consider hitting that subscribe button. We've got all kinds of content from off-roading content for the Jeep Gladiator to um, Jeep Grand Cherokee and, and just other product videos and all that. So go through, look at some other videos. Again, thanks so much for watching. I hope this was helpful and we will see you guys again real soon.